say no to that, you can't automatically say no to growing meat and tubes being banned. I mean, automatically, it's the same basic principle. You're, you're creating something in a lab environment that either can't or would be more cost prohibitive to do outside of a lab environment. But the thing, the question that I always think about is safety. I always think about that first. Hydrogenated oils is my pet peeve. Hi partially and fully hydrogenated oils, they make my skin curl. Mostly because I'm an old punk rocker. And the whole reason that hydrogenated oils exist. Anybody heard of hydrogenated oils before? Yes. Okay, explain, JT, if you don't mind, just explain what they are, real quick. This altered where the hydrogen is like transverse instead of parallel, I guess. And why do they do it? Uh, to the solidify or and what and what uh, economic benefit does that have? Uh, longer, longer, shelf longer shelf life. When I found that out, I immediately stopped liking them. <laughs> Messing with food to let it sit on a shelf longer. Now I've seen plenty of studies that say the closer you can get to the source of your food, the better. One of my happiest experiences every year is watching my son reach up, crack an ear of corn off of one of our corn stalks, and bite into it three seconds later. Because it does not get better than that unless you eat it while it's on the stalk, which he won't do. I keep. So, the closer you can get to the food, the better. Hydrogenated oils, in my opinion, are taking you exactly the wrong way. They're taking you further away from the source. So that's my problem with them. However, I've never seen any studies that show they have any wickedly adverse effects. So, I, I hate them on principle. So, that aside, everything else I try to view through the lens of, okay, my gut says it's weird. Is my gut trustworthy? And I always try to test that using statistics whenever possible. Jenny had an AHA final, American Heart Association CPR final, a couple years ago. I took it at two springs, no, a year ago. A year ago, today, essentially, a year ago, this month. Multiple choice exam. Who's taking 244? Because they're taking 244. If you take it with me, we'll run the, we'll actually run the test at the end of the, the class together. And I was looking at the multiple choice question answers. I was answering the test, answering the test, answering the test. And I'm looking at it, I'm like, the kids are going to freak out when they take this. Because I'm taking it with a bunch of students. And the answer towards is like A, 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 B, A, A, B, 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 C, C, B, B, C, 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 D, D, D. And I'm looking around, the kids are freaking out. I'm like, this is great. This is genius. That's what this is. Because you're making you second guess yourself, right? Yes. And my gut said they did it intentionally. There's no way that randomly distributed numbers would have done this. Guess what? I was wrong. Really? I was wrong. They were clumped just enough. They were clumped on the high end of normal. Good, because you guys did the same thing. I was watching Tyler. And as I was describing that, he was going, wait a minute, that sounds fishy. It was getting towards fishy, but it hadn't crossed over into two standard deviation fishiness, if so to speak. See, remember two standard deviations? That's one measure of outlier. It hadn't crossed over into the 5% range. It was in the 12% range. So my gut was kind of right in that it was going like, wait a minute, it's starting to look weird, but it wasn't like all the way over to, okay, now there's something off. So it could have happened by chance, just not a very good chance. That's what stat allows you to do. It allows you to take a measurement on a set of data and make an inference from it. Just today, something historical happened in 2.44, not half an hour ago. Every term in 2.44, at the end of the term, we test M&M candies. M&M candies, because M&M's tells me there are six colors in milk chocolate M&M's, six, six colors. And we test them to see if the percentages that are supposed to be in the bag, color-wise, actually are in the bag. Let's experiment for 15 years. 15 years, three times a year. I started collecting data in Excel in 2006. Ever since that first collection, the percentages are always off what they say they're supposed to be. If you've been in my office, when you walk into my office, off to the left, there's a series of letters from me to Mars, and a series of form letters from Mars to me answering my letters. And I say, guys, your percentages are off. And they say, thank you for playing. Your percentages are off. Thank you for playing. Your percentages are off. 30, 40 trials I've done this, and they're always off. And then today, they were on. They were on today. And I just sat there looking at the results on the board. The kids are like, what's wrong? Why are you drooling? And I'm like, this hasn't happened in a decade. They're like, what hasn't happened? I'm like, oh god, yeah, right, right, right. Gave them the backstory, and they're like, well, it's probably a false negative then. Boom! It's probably a false negative. I'm like, yeah, the same thing I was thinking too, but I'm still blown away by the fact that it happened. I'm not, I don't expect false negatives, and that brings up the whole discussion of false negatives in blood doping, which is a huge controversy. You have to allow for more false negatives because you don't want as many false positives, because a false positive in blood doping ends somebody's career. Even if they get cleared later, a false positive event somebody. So that's why I get pissed off with news media. When they throw a headline up, no, I'm not saying this guy's innocent. COCC presidential pick, sexual abuse allegations. Allegations, no charges have been filed, yet that's the headline. Good luck recovering from that one, Patrick, whatever your name is, Patrick Lanning. Now, I think he actually was charged since then, but this was before he was charged. 
you, you put a false positive up like that, if that was a false positive, his career is over. And his career is over anyway, because I think he actually did it. But even if he didn't, his career would have been over, right? Dre? Yeah, I sat on that committee. We you had, did? We had no idea. Dude, no, I'm not, dude, I'm not criticizing you guys. Please realize no, that. No, we had, we had no idea. Dude, about it was that. hidden from you guys. Yeah. It, they, he was told not to talk about it to you guys expressly. Boy, yeah, Trey had the unfortunate luck of having to go through an entire year worth of a nozzle search. Well, no, it was, the search itself was like, I think a month and a half, but the... The weeding out process. The weeding out yes, process. Yes, of course. Like the interview process was a month and a half, three candidates. Yeah. But I mean, to weed through that and then to find this out at the end. At the very end. At the very end. And there was a reason for that. The call, and the only reason they found out about it was, was some, some hotline calls. Hey, you might want to think about blah. Like that was like a tip off. Uh, I think it's something around that. Mm -hmm. I don't really know. Because he was told, those. don't talk about it. Which so I'm not trying to defend nor persecute the guy. And I'm definitely not persecuting you guys because you guys have no information about it. What I'm saying is, if you put that headline up, which is a positive test result, boom, guilty, even before he is, even if he's cleared later, you think that's going to get a headline? No, that's eight page news, right? That's not A1. Well, even, so, even just allegations beforehand, we would have never even. Of course, never even looked at it. It would have been, it would have been off. Exactly. Was, honestly, he was from Central Oregon. He grew up in private. It's he very convincing, he, subjectively. He went everywhere, yep. did everything he had to do. Johnny Cash. Yeah. Minus really. the pill pot. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and then the fact that Johnny's dead. But regardless, yes. Yeah. So anyway, statistics just leeches into your life. It, I've, I've had an overload over the past 24 hours between Liccardo's talk and then today with the M&M's and then today being here with you guys talking about Michael Phelps and uh, Mark Spitz. It's just, it's kind of overloading, but it's just, it's everywhere. That's kind of the point. Okay, JT, go ahead. What are you going to say? I know, and I can't believe I, I had it on my back burner in my Outlook calendar to send you guys an email to remind you about his talk, and I totally spaced like you guys, reminding you to go to it last night. I don't know how many of you could have gone 6 to 7.15 last night. I squeezed it in between Taekwondo and story time. <laughs> but it was well worth going. If he gives the talk again, if he wants to give it again, I'll be sure to track you guys down and let you know about it. John Licardo. He teaches oh. HHP here at COCC and a great dude. And What's he talking about? Blood doping and elite athletes. Oh. Mostly Nordic skiers and cyclists. Um, the first video clip he showed was Lance over the course of like 2005 to 2000. Uh, 13, denying, 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 denying. And then at the very end was the Oprah interview where he admitted to the doping. And I remember I stopped watching the tour in 2004 because of that. Like, when, it was 04 or 05 when like half the Peloton got nailed for doping. Lance didn't. He was able to escape it until like last year, essentially. He took everything. He took, yep. He, he, he had such an army around him protecting him from going down. It was just such a, for me, it was a heartbreaker when Tyler Hamilton got nailed. I don't remember you guys remember Tyler. He's from Boulder, Colorado. Um, he finished fourth in the tour in 2004 with a broken collarbone. Now, finishing the Tour de France is a bucket list item for me someday. It'll take me three and a half years to do every leg of it, I'm sure, because A, I don't have time, and B, I'm not doping, <laughs> and I'm not snorting coke, and I'm not, an elite, I'm not an elite cyclist. But Tyler finished the tour in fourth place with a broken collarbone. Like, that's, like, he sealed, like, in my heart, I'm like, I love this man. He's amazing. Plus, he's humble, humble as hell. Well, he's also dope to the gills the entire time. And the reason they caught him was when he was doping, they swapped his blood with another rider's blood, which was not the same blood type, and they both got gravely ill. And as they were drawing blood for tests, they said, wait a minute, why are your hemoglobin counts off the chart? Oh, wait a minute, doesn't EPO drive your hemoglobin counts off the chart? Hey, wait a minute, hey, wait a minute, boom. And a lot of these guys get nailed because they do stupid crap. For example, the science of doping, it's a, it's a wonderful talk. The science of it is such that they know how to test for it now. But the athletes keep getting smart about, about how to hide it. So what they do is they do micro doses of the EPO that, 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 that kind of come in under the radar. And to make the micro dose even less detectable, they'll drink like a liter of water while they do it. One dude got nailed because he forgot to drink his liter of water. That's all it took. He forgot to take a Nalgene of water before his test, and that pushed him into that suspect category they nailed. I mean, great. Remember the 2002 uh, Salt Lake Olympics? You may, you may have watched that. It was the men's pursuit gold medal round. There was one dude, like a half mile in front of everybody else, just crushing. Ha, ah, ah. ha, anybody uh, 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 skate skiing in here? I just started skate skiing this winter. It is, it is the most amazing physical act I've ever done in my life. Next to like amateur wrestling. But like as far as like just getting your ass handed to you cardiovascularly, and this dude is running up the hill on skis. The rest of the pack is fighting for, sil for the silver medal. They're like, they're like a half a kilometer behind it. And this dude, the announcer's going, Oh yes, he's reinventing the sport of Nordic skiing. This is not a result of days or weeks, it's years of training. No, it's actually just he's dope to the gills. And he's using the oxygen more effectively. 
I mean, it, that's all it was, and they found out later that it was dope to the gills, and it's just, you, you have to go like, damn, your heroes just keep falling off. Lance was my hero, killed cancer, came back, taught me how to ride hills more effectively, and I held that for a decade or more. Yes? What exactly is ski skiing? Skate skiing! So you know what classic skiing is when you parallel? Right. It's the, it's the ski, where you're, it's, you have to go on a groom trail. Think of it as the road biking of skiing. Where mountain biking is like classic skiing, like mountain biking, road, it's like road biking. You have to go on like groomed trail. You, it's like ice skating on skis. Um, the, so it's, it's, down, like, there are downhills. It, it's cross country skiing for sure, but it, you, there are up and downs. The ups are brutal. I mean, if you, have, if you don't have good form, you just power up hills. And I, I use I wrap my arms a lot, which you're not supposed to do. Um, I crappy form, but I can appreciate how much work it is. And when I saw this guy skating, I'm like, it's like he's like. He's got like an aqua lung on his back, he's pumping oxygen into his lungs, and he's just <laughs> And then I'm, well, it's because he's, essentially that's what was going on. EPO, that's what, that's what it does. It makes you more efficient at transferring oxygen into your, to your bloodstream, which is cheating. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I can stop worrying about how impressive the guy is, because it really isn't impressive. Well, it, it is impressive. That's the thing, is that these guys and girls are elites, right? So they're looking for any advantage to get one step ahead. And that's the problem. It's impossible to win the Tour de France clean. It's just impossible. The, 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 the playing field that was leveled, if it ever was leveled naturally, is now up here because of that. So if you want to compete clean, you can totally compete, you'll just never win. Which means you won't get the sponsorships, which means you won't get the money from the endorsements, which means you can, by all means, finish you know last place at Tour de France and you did it clean, but it won't mean anything, except to you, mate. And then it makes you question the ethics of sport. Why do we compete at all? I don't have answers. I'm just throwing that out. That's kind of, I, don't, I have no answers for you. I'm just saying that's kind of what the, the whole point was. So, I mean, think about all the technological advancements. Right? We're going to talk about some of them today with, with Spitz and Phelps. But the suits, right? The suits. That's all a technological advancement. Why isn't that like as bad as doping? Isn't that cheating? I, I, see? Where's the line, right? Where's the line? Stop drinking energy drinks. Put that coffee down. Take Prozac. Take, take, take Prozac. Prozac. Oh, yeah. Take Prozac. Oh, thank you. I think oh, I think the majority, in my opinion. It's okay. You have an opinion. I think the majority are so OCD. I don't see how they live in their own skin ninety percent of the time. Seriously, I mean, it's just they're so driven they just can't even. Well, and that's, but that's their job. That's their livelihood, right? Yeah. That's you know, their livelihood. So excessive. Well, but one know. could argue that I'm that way about education. I mean, I think about how to teach you guys pretty much all the time when I'm not thinking about other stuff. I'm riding up the hill on my bike, and I'm going through my mind, what could I do better, what could I do differently? It's pretty yeah, obsessive. Probably sometimes. No, it's awesome. I love it. Well, I'm, I'm not saying I don't enjoy it. I love doing it. It's, it's, I think it's they're pleasurable. A whole, I think they're already been at another level. Could be. Yeah, could be. You know, I, I don't know any of them well enough, which is weird, because we live in bed. This town is full of those people. I just never talk to any of them. I hang out with all the Al, the amateur weekend warriors, and like, hey, go up that wall again. Oops, look at your arm. So, you know what I mean? <laughs> Different, different crowd. <laughs> perfectly valid, perfectly valid though. I just wish I had told, I wish I had reminded you guys to go to that last night. I'm sorry. I will keep an eye on it, and if, if John ever does it again, I'll be sure to let you know. Because it's, uh, it's totally freaking rad. So. Cool! Yeah. Alright, I do have stuff to return to you. Thanks for reminding me, Zach. I'll do it at the break. When we get closer to the break, I'll return the papers and you, know, you guys need your stuff. Uh, um, looking forward, how are the quizzes for this week? It's like Pascal's triangle. Was that a phone? Anyway, it's a couple, a couple of you did it. Not many. <laughs> Pascal's was okay. Um, oh, no, a few of you did it. Who's over here, too? And then this one, actually, these are all the same quiz. No. So, yes, Pascal's was well attended. And then we've got, uh, that's Pascal's. Okay, I'm going to try to, I'll deal with that later. <laughs> Pascal's, and there was some other quiz, yes? Yeah. More binomial fun. Was it the alarm clock ones? Yeah. Yeah. You lost one. No, you turned it in early. Yeah. It's still in the pile. It's just a different pile error. I got it, don't worry. It's in there. My great actually saw it. So what the hell is this? I'm like, you turned it in early. Relax. It's all good. It's good. That's a big great thing. Um, so yeah, just more binomial. I think I put one more binomial for you guys for next week. Last week. Last quizzes. Next week. Two quizzes. One binomial involving a Rolling Star article I read about Sarah Palin. Super, super fun and test. Um, and the second one is a standard normal quiz, which we're going to use today. We'll use standard normal today. We used it yesterday. Um, programs, basically, essentially a program to help us get areas. And uh, that's it. And you got a project next week. And holy crap, it's week nine. Yeah. How you feel? Feel like week nine? Feels completely overwhelmed. Well, 
In that respect, I like taking everything out of class and taking things and making them on time. Hopefully that takes a little bit off the plate, a little bit. I mean, you have to get it done, I know, but at least you have the... You have time. You have time. And don't forget, speaking of time, Jen, thank you, uh, two weeks from today is the last major assignment due, right? Exam two. Yeah. Right, just don't forget that's there. It's not due for two weeks from today, but just keep whittling away at it. And some of the stuff we'll do today will help you do that. Some problems on that exam. I think after today and Tuesday, you're ready to knock out the entire thing. You can do a big chunk of it right now. But if you get stuck, just email me and we'll, we'll talk through it. Okay? There's some depressing crap in there. I apologize. Student debt and things like that. I do apologize. <laughs> but I stuck Max in there too to cheer you up a little bit. So. Uh, the tower, tower of Terror. Tower of Terror! That's a fun math problem. Student debt wasn't. Can I go on Tower of Terror? Like, I don't know. It's measuring. So then I was like, oh crap, it's going to be a great math. See, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> I go and I take Max to the thing. I'm like, all right, take Max to the Lego land. I'm like, he wants to buy minifigures. There's 16. How many should he draw on average until he gets them all? It's like, yeah. It's a disease, but it's a fun disease. Yeah. It's like the perfect thing for an ADD person. So. Anyway, yes, Tower of Terror, great ride, great ride. Yes. So anyway, let's get back into it, yes? Let's get back into it. So, what I want to do is let's restart this. And I do want to ask you a question. To